Hey guys, thanks for hitting that thumbnail and today I'm going to finish tackling that age old question. Do I campground camp or do I disperse camp? Pros and cons of each. Stay tuned. Guys, once again, thanks for hitting that thumbnail button and joining me this weekend on the second part of a two-part series. Should I disperse camp or should I campground camp? Last month, we found ourselves at the Aspen Campgrounds in the Apache Sit Graves National Forest doing the manicured camping or what I call manicured camping where they've got resources available, amenities available like latrines and, and, and running water, fire pits. And I went over the pros and cons of that. This month, a month later, I'm about five miles down the road, past Forest Lakes on Forest Service Road 300. And we are dispersed camping this weekend. And let me give you a little rundown. Forest Service 300, the road is about 100 yards that way. So we're about 100, 150 yards off the road. I have got my truck and trailer. I carried the Razor on the trailer. Razor's over here to my right. Behind the camera is the campground. My dad decided to join us this week, or yeah, this weekend for uh, camping. So <coughs> we're making, excuse me, we're making use of his uh, travel trailer and what it provides. So we don't have to, we don't have to set up uh, a tent and all that other stuff. So, anyways, off the bat, the number one plus to disperse camping over manicured camping is you can be as remote as you want. Like I said, we're about 100 yards, 150 yards off the road. Closest campground to my south was about 350 yards that way, but this morning some people pulled in about 100 yards over here. So that's the closest campground to us, hopefully they're not going to be really loud tonight. That's going to upset me because we got back here and there was nobody. I don't really want to have to deal with loud drunks again. Back to my north, there's nobody for a good distance. And then usually when it's real busy up here, the west side of 300 is usually jammed packed with people, but it's relatively quiet up here this weekend. We don't have too, too many campgrounds, but you could go further down 300 and get as remote as you want number one plus. The second plus I'll bring up right now in this segment is it didn't cost us anything to set up here. You just find a spot on the off the road back here a little ways off the road and you just set up. The Aspen campground cost us $27 a night so it ended up being a oh I don't know a $54, $55. It cost us $55 for two nights up there at uh, Aspen so Right off the bat, you can be as remote as you want, and then you can be, uh, and you can set up, and it doesn't cost you any extra money. And then uh, in the next segment, I'll catch you guys about a few of the cons. Stay tuned. This is another perk of dispersed camping. Oh my goodness. Look at them. These are wild horses. This is the second or third set of three that have grazed through our camp today. Sometimes you get elk, sometimes you get deer, but I know this much for sure. I've only one time seen an elk go through a manicured campground. What the hell happened? manicured campground over over there at Aspen a couple years ago we had a a uh, elk cow graze through but you're a lot more likely to get scenes like this passing through your camp of wild horses and other wildlife 
that you wouldn't normally see in manicured campgrounds. All right, guys, so, so far we've talked about a couple of pros about dispersed camping. Um, one being that you don't have to pay for the site. That's free to you. Uh, the, the biggest pro is being as remote and away from people as you want. Um, and then I kind of, uh, when the opportunity arose this afternoon when some wild horses were feeding through, the chance at seeing wildlife a lot more likely when you're dispersed camping than if you're in a manicured national forest campground. Uh, some of the cons, you have to be more self-reliant, which means you got to bring your own water. You got to bring, if you don't want to uh, dig cat holes to relieve yourself in, you know, doing the number two having to dig cat holes and that kind of, and then squatting over them. You know, you have to bring your own facility of some kind, whether that's a travel trailer with a bathroom in it or a luggable loo or digging cat holes, but more self-reliant, got to bring your own water. And just overall being more self-reliant, you won't have that, that, that convenience of having uh, potable well water available to you in the campground and having the latrines and some of these campgrounds even have showers in them so so i don't know if you'd call being more self-reliant a con but you just you lose some of those conveniences um i mentioned in the previous video about manicured camping that when you're in the forest is in stage two fire restriction you can have a fire in a manicured campground, but not in dispersed camping. But that con goes away when you have a whole bunch of monsoon rain and the fire danger goes to very, very, very low. Now you're dispersed camping with a campfire. So that pro of having the fire in a manicured campground when you're under fire restrictions goes away when you don't have fire restrictions so it's half a dozen one way a dozen the other or six the other so anyways um i hope these two videos help help you decide if you're just starting out which way you would like to go if you'd like to be more self-reliant and try it disperse camping um but my recommendation is, is if you haven't done this before Get a couple trips under your belt in a manicured campground and really refine your gear load out and how you do things before you come out here and try it disperse because there's a little bit of a learning curve. But um, guys, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe if you're not already. Like, share, leave comments, good or bad. And any any action on the channel is action on the channel. I am I may at this point by the time this video is published already have a Patreon account, but I'm working on starting up a Patreon. I would encourage you to go look at the uh, Patreon intro video on there and consider subscribing to me on Patreon to help me build these channels. Uh, other ways you could help is just like I said, like, subscribe share those things but uh uh for now oh shit before i go i forgot one of the biggest pros for me out here in dispersed camp is the only light pollution i've got is this fire and because there's no other camps that are real close i don't have a lot of light pollution so i can actually do nighttime photography if i don't have cloud cover but unfortunately Tonight I got cloud cover. I'm not going to be able to make a time lapse of the night sky. I enjoy doing that. But anyways, all right, sorry, took too long in this and got backwards on some of the stuff. But thanks for watching. See you later.